Hey, hey, Cub fans. Thanks for joining us here on Cubs 24-7, where Randy talks Cubs. We got a much-needed win tonight over the Mariners. Final score, 4-1. to one. It wasn't pretty, but we got the job done. There's, there's some good news in it, but uh, some not-so-good news as well, in my mind. The win moves us to 8-6, uh, ties the series at one game apiece with the, the rubber match tomorrow afternoon before we move on to Arizona for a, a crucial three-game set with the Diamondbacks. So tomorrow's game is big uh, as well. Um, Cubs are 8-6. and six. We scored four runs today. We got uh, one run in four innings. We scored in the f- second inning, the third, the seventh, and the eighth inning. Solo home runs by Seiya Suzuki, Michael Bush, and Miguel Amaya led the way. So six hits total. We didn't walk at all and struck out eight times. So it, the three homers carried us, obviously, and there wasn't really much else. Um, on the pitching side, a lot of good news there. Um, even though some of the lines, especially for Shota, I'll give you the lines and, and we'll start that way. Uh, but I think there's a lot of good news in what might appear to be um, a more robust line that Shota ended up with, but we'll get to that. Let's go ahead and talk about the lineups. Where do we start? Same lineup as last night with the exception of Miguel Amaya behind the plate in place of Jan Gomes. Hap was in left, leading off. Saya in right field, hitting second. Belly in center field, hitting third. Christopher Morel, uh, third base, hitting fourth. Dansby at shortstop, hitting fifth. Michael Bush at first base, hitting sixth. Nico back at second base, hitting seventh. Michael Talkman was DHing again tonight in the eight hole with Miguel Amaya hitting ninth. Let's do the scoring first. We got one run in the second inning. Dansby hit a uh, soft line drive to left field for a single. Uh, Bush was up. And with Dansby running, a little hit and run action, Bush uh, hit a solid uh, line drive uh, to right field. Dansby uh, hustles over to third. So we got first and third. Uh, Nico up. Nico hit, drills one to center fielder line drive. Uh, for unfortunately, it was right at him, but Nico hit it hard. Uh, ended up getting the sacrifice fly. Dansby scored. So that's the first run in the second, third inning. Say Suzuki golfed a breaking ball to uh, left field, just over the wall in left field. I think about 386 feet, somewhere in that range. But it, it was a, a way up there. So say a homers, seventh inning, uh, Michael Bush hits a towering home run, solo shot to the corner in right field. And in the eighth inning, Miguel Amaya got his first of the year. It's nice to see. And um, solid solid home run to, to left field for Miguel. So, you know, the, the first run in the second inning, a little bit of a man, manufactured run, um, and then three solo shots in the third, seventh, and eighth for the four Cub runs. Uh, that ended up being enough. Um, Ian Happ uh, snapped his, uh, you know, hitting streak or getting on base streak today. He was 0 for 4, didn't walk, didn't reach. So that uh, streak of 13 games came to an end tonight for Ian. Um, Seiya Suzuki went 1 for 4 with that home run. Seiya struck out uh, three times tonight. Bellinger went 0 for 4 again, and... Uh, I'm, I didn't look it up to know for sure. I didn't really want to. But he's only got one hit in uh, on the road trip so far. And um, so we're getting very little out of uh, Cody right now. And he ended up hitting the ball relatively hard in his fly out in the eighth inning. Hit it right at him. So uh, I, I expect him to start breaking out. But he, he, he's got the look in his eyes like he's a little bit confused. So Cody Bellinger went 0 for 4 again tonight in the three hole. Um, that's hard. That's tough to, it's, that's going to be tough to sustain getting that kind of, or lack of production out of belly. So we need to get him going. Christopher Morrell went 0 for 4, but he hit the ball hard. Uh, I thought Christopher ran into some bad luck uh, offensively tonight, but more importantly, Christopher Morrell played great defense tonight. And he probably made, I know he made, uh, at least two plays in the sixth inning that really saved Shota, uh, and Gart got Mark Leiter Jr. Uh, out of a little bit of a pickle as well. But he made three or four really great plays tonight. 
uh, Christopher Morrell. Uh, so much so that Council left him in. He didn't replace him with with Madrigal in the late innings, even though we had the lead. So that's that's good. Uh, it's good to see Christopher play well. You can see his confidence level uh, on the rise at third base. Dansby went one for four. Um, he struck out three times. So still a little bit of a, a scuffle for Dansby. Michael Bush with his homer, uh, he went two for four. He singled in that second inning, and um, and and he hit the ball hard. Otherwise, he lined out uh, to shortstop in the ninth inning. So. Michael Bush hitting the ball. He had the air. I'll talk about that. Uh, Michael Bush had an air in the second inning. Just, just, just missed it. Uh, Dansby uh, pretty much played a ground ball, backhanded it, and uh, his throw. Dansby didn't get a lot on it, and it was a little bit of a sinker. And the it, the ball got close to the dirt, but maybe it didn't hit the dirt. And Michael just sort of got in between, didn't catch it. I mean, it was like a, it was a little league error, really. So Michael Bush had an error in the the second inning, ended up, um, you know, causing us really the the one run that the uh, Mariners got was unearned because of the Bush error in the second. So at the time, it was pretty significant. But uh, you know, he redeemed himself, hit a home run uh, in the seventh inning, goes two for four. He's he's really hitting the ball. He he's right now our best hitter. Nico went 0 for 2 tonight, but he hit the ball hard. The sacrifice fly was hard. And in the fifth inning, uh, he grounds out 4 to 3, line drive one hopper. Uh, so, Nico, over the last couple games, he hasn't been rewarded, but he's starting to hit the ball better. So, I feel like it's just a matter of time uh, for Nico. Talk went 1 for 3. Uh, he had a single in the fifth. And Amaya went 1 for 3 uh, total with the. Uh, with the home run, so that's the offensive production for for today. Today, and uh, it's still not real good. Uh, we're 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 still underachieving offensively. So hopefully we'll break out of that uh, in the sh- in the short term, starting tomorrow. Let's talk about Shota's outing. Uh, let me give you his line first. Shota ends up going five and a third. He gives up five hits, two walks, and he uh, strikes out four, and he throws ninety pitches. 55 of them were strikes. So, and he gives up a run, but it's unearned. So the one run unearned. But Shota did Shota wasn't on tonight at all. He wasn't he wasn't sharp. Uh the the two walks that he had uh in the uh the 6th inning were the first walks of the year. So, he he wasn't a first pitch strike Shota tonight. He really had to struggle. And that's the good news. The good news is we had Shoulder tonight, wasn't on, and still managed to work his way through it. D- didn't give up an earned run. Still has in his ERA, 0 0 0. So that's the good news with Shoulder. Shoulder wasn't on tonight. He was missing his spot. He was pulling his fastball and still just competed and, and got out of it. You know, we haven't been able to talk about it much, but that's a, that's a sign of a good pitcher when you can win without your. A game and Shota was definitely not on, so I, that's the good news for me. He had uh, some good innings. First inning, he goes one, two, three with a K, thirteen pitches. Second inning, the error happened. Uh, he gives up two hits, had a, a K, and took him twenty six pitches to get out of that. Uh, third inning was quicker, uh, aided by uh, Morrell, and it went one, two, three, nine pitches. Fourth inning, he gives up two hits and a strikeout, 17 pitches to get out of that. Uh, fifth inning, just 10 pitches, uh, a strikeout, gave up a hit. So some things were scattered in there, and uh, he just never never let it snowball on him. And then in the sixth inning, uh, two walks, and then uh, Morel bails him out with a really nice play. But he leaves second and third for Mark Leiter Jr. So Mark Leiter Jr. comes in in the sixth inning, just got one out, runners on uh, second and third. And I got to tell you, Mark Leiter Jr., you got to watch him for a while because Mark Leiter Jr. isn't uh, flashy. He's not like a you know this flashy coin that you just got to see once. You know, doesn't throw that hard, uh, doesn't look all that athletic. Uh, but you watch Mark Leiter Jr. over time like we have – and he he's probably our most consistent reliever, most effective. 
So he comes in and he just does what Mark Leiter does and gets people out. So Mark goes an inning at a third, uh, had a strikeout and just kind of locked it up. So uh, Mark Leiter may have been – he came in at a time of the game where it could have gone the other way for Shota, and Mark Mark really saved him. Then Yancey comes in on Monte. Yancey pitches well. He gets an out in the seventh and two in the eighth, a couple of strikeouts, so he pitches an inning. Uh, Hector Neris came in, finished out the eighth, um, walked a guy before he got a ground out, uh, so he just pitched a third and got out of it. And then – uh, Adbert came in in the ninth, got a strikeout. We went one, two, three for the save, and it was it was done. So, you know, I really like it. We you, even though we didn't get a lot of traffic, the three home runs that's good. Amaya hitting his first, Bush is hitting, Say is still going to go for power. Nico's coming, Belly is I'm not sure uh, what's going to happen. Um, Dansby is scuffling a little bit, so there's still some questions on the offensive side. But it was just real nice to see the. The, the pitching staff sort of pull Shota out of that and help him and uh, to watch Shota uh, go through that uh, five and third inning when he just wasn't quite on. It, it was really good to see, and he's so animated. He's just fun to watch pitch. So it's all good news. I think we're, um, we're set up good. We've got Javier Assad going tomorrow in the rubber game tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we get that. We go to Arizona at nine and six, and we're we're good to go. Got to get the bats going though. We need we need more hits than six. We had four yesterday, so we need a little bit more uh, consistency up and down through the lineup. So um, rubber match tomorrow. Uh, hopefully Assad will be on, and we can pick up the win and go to Arizona. I got a couple tidbits for us that I found interesting. Um, number one is Jamison Tyone. Apparently. Uh, he is headed to Arizona, and he's going to meet us in Arizona first of the week, which at this point means it looks like his next start could be with the Cubs. So that's that's something to keep our eye on as well. Uh, Patrick Wisdom has now been playing. He started his rehab about a week ago. Um, haven't heard anything, but it just time-wise, it seems like if he's coming, he's, he's probably ready to go. And down in um, – Triple A, couple three things that I wanted to share with you. Number one, Matt Mervis is mashing again, and um, he's six for sixteen for forty eight with four home runs, ten RBIs. Slash is three thirty three with a four twenty four uh, on base and a six eighty eight slug. OPS over a thousand at one point one one two. And uh, you know, uh, mash causes a lot of discussion on both sides, like. Um, well, what what does that mean? And my stance would be we needed to to see that either way. If uh, Mervis goes down and he does what he's doing, which means he reverts back to what he did in AAA before he got called up late last year, um, if he does that, that gives us options now. And an option would be, obviously, to bring him up. But we got Michael Bush, who's pretty entrenched at first base. Uh, if they want to start moving around for DH, that's possible. But the other thing that I always had in my mind is if we need to use Mervis as a trade to get something we really need elsewhere, in order to get something of quality, we need him to be hitting well. So that's the reason I'm sharing it with you, not so much as I'm advocating for Matt Mervis to come and play first base, but the idea is he's playing well, he's hitting well, so he is now uh, uh, an item that brings value to us. And I think that's good news. Next player is Luis Vasquez. Luis doing the same thing. He's raking. 341 uh, average with a 412 on base. He's slugging 568. OPS is 988. Luis Vasquez, a defense first infielder who's now putting a slash line together like that. Uh, that creates value as well. So I think that's good news, Mervis and Vasquez. I've got a piece of bad news, and I don't know if you had a chance to see this yet, but Cole Franklin got a start at Iowa uh, yesterday, I think it was, and he's hurt. And I don't know the specifics of it, but I just tell you what we what we saw. He threw a curveball and then uh, basically broke down in pain with his right arm. So it wasn't, oh, I don't I, – I'm uncomfortable. He was certain like something something popped. Uh, he he was down after throwing a pitch, and it just it just didn't look. It can't be good 
to have him react that way. So that was uh, that was hard to watch. I haven't heard the the update on Cole Franklin's uh, condition as of now, but that just happened. So uh, just some tidbits that I I had in my mind. I wanted to pass along in case you haven't had a chance to see it. And um, yeah, some good news in in Iowa and some bad news in Iowa as well. Guys, thanks for joining us here on Cubs 24-7, where Randy talks Cubs. Cubs, again, take care of their Manor, Mariners tonight, 4-1. to uh, One more game tomorrow night. We'll see you after that. Go Cubs, go.